I'm with Carlos Garcia Rodriguez, one of the part owners of the Black Pig here in uh, Commerce Center, Alabang. What made you decide to choose Pedro Brew Crafters as among one of the local uh, craft beers that you had as part of your selection? Well, what we make us uh, choose a beer uh, was the, the flavor, mm -hmm. of course, um, and how, uh, how, how they get it right. Since we opened two and a half years ago, we haven't had a single uh, problem. I mean, every single customer whether it was local or whether it was foreigner, they all loved it. Do you find anything uh, distinctive or unique about how they created uh, Pedro Brewcraft beers? What I found it in, this, uh, in, in, in this beer is that, I don't know, it's like a living thing. It's, uh, you, have a, you have a soul. You can tell and you can really test that when you drink it, you know, the, 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 the love they put into it. At the same time, what's the feedback of the foreigners who have, the, who have the chance to try all these foreign beers and then they try Pedro Brewcraft? Okay, well, it's funny that you say because uh, just uh, actually last night mm -hmm. we have a, a group of foreigners here. They're, they're staying in here in Parque de España, which is they're here for holiday from actually from the state. And and it was funny because I was just walking, walking down, and, and when I went to talk to them, they were like drinking, and they, and when I told them that they were local, they were just uh, just their faces and their eyes like, wow. And we're with Mel Lozano, who is purportedly a beer purveyor. <laughs> she enjoys a you enjoy a good beer, right, Mel? Yeah. And I understand that um, this place, uh, Black Pig, where they serve actually Pedro, is a place uh, where you first discovered um, Pedro, yeah. brew crafters. The thing I like about Pedro, it's very light. Mm -hmm. um, I like my beer sweet and I find it very fruity compared okay. to the other beers I've tasted. And what encouraged you to try it out in the first place, especially if you're not it's a beer Pinoy. connoisseur? It's Pinoy beer. Also, you like, you like the yeah, idea. Yeah, I like the idea of, of buying your local. It's the packaging is so nice, so the first that's thing right, you see right, is, right. hey, this is interesting. And then if you taste it, man, it really does make a difference. I mean, price might not be a major consideration. Mm. It's, it's probably taste and quality. But if you were to take a look at the, the price points of these beers, how, how would you find the price points? It's cheaper well? than buying imported. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more expensive than buying, obviously, your local pale pilsen. But like what you said, you're buying the quality, you're buying the craftsmanship behind it. And I think there's a market right now that appreciate craftsmanship and the hard work that goes behind a product. And have you found that more and more people are appreciating these beers? I mean, just amongst yourself when you try the beer, there's a conversion among people? You yeah, see? there's definitely a beer culture growing in the Philippines and I'm glad that Pedro is, is there at the forefront pushing that beer, that local beer culture. Conversations are always better with beer, especially when you're talking about the bottom line. So. Um, as we discuss uh, things over beer, no, what I really want to know is, as we start, um, as you start doing this business, um, people talk about their business models. And for you guys, I mean, is it just a basic business model for beer or for retail? Yes, um, it's a pretty traditional business model. Um, we're in manufacturing okay. Um, okay. and uh, distribution. Tell me a bit more about what you guys are competing against. Um, it's really both. Um, we're trying to compete with those. We're trying to uh, market it to those who enjoy beer, mm -hmm. um, who already like uh, craft beer or just beer in general, mm -hmm. and also compete with um, and introduce it to those who don't know anything about it. Okay, I, I would say we're we're making the market really. Um, three years ago people didn't really know what craft beer was in the Philippines. There were a few importers who were starting to bring it in and a few okay. home brewers. But it's very early on in the game. Part of the effort that, w that we make every day is to educate people and to teach them um, a little bit about how our beers are different from uh, the more commercially available beers. How is the market like? Is it very, do you see it, is it growing or is it a, a closed market? Because usually, you know, you, you, you can think of it in a way where, you know, uh, we're not worried about you guys because basically all together we're growing the market. I think it's all about uh, providing the customer with options. Okay. Uh, if you look at the U.S., uh, you go into a grocery there and then they have three aisles worth of craft beer. Mm -hmm. if, if you have four or five beers, then maybe it might sell better if it's selling in a place that sells eight beers or 12 beers and people know that all those beers are available there. Knowing all these things, you know, um, what do you see uh, Pedro Brewcrafters in the next five years? Do you see them um, increasing the variants? Do you see yourselves um, uh, going global? Well, we're definitely pulling out a lot more val uh, variants. Um, we're trying to keep things fresh and provide um, customers with options and we're thinking of new things for them to try every day. Yeah. But the goal yeah. is really to export. The, the export the, the, yes. oh. um, the goal is to grow within the Philippines, to grow the market and awareness of craft beer, um, and also to supply um, in other markets within the region. Yeah, I think eventually we're going to also find and develop a, 
uh, a style, a local style of beer. Mm -hmm. It's like what's happening in the U.S. now. You have your East Coast uh, beers, beers uh, and your West Coast beers, and it's it's a function not just of the market that drinks them, but also maybe the weather, the environment, the, the, the temperature at which they're served. So we're adapting our, uh, the beers that we make slowly to what's available uh, locally in the Philippines and what people like. And I guess the most important question is right now: Are you guys making money here in Pedro Brewcrafters? The short answer would be no, but we're on track. Uh, we've been in commercial production for uh, a little under a year now. It's about 10 months of full commercial production. So uh, we're on schedule, but uh, it being a traditional business model, which is uh, rather heavy in terms of investment mm -hmm. in the beginning, of course, we haven't amortized that yet. Got it. So I guess the key here really is to produce uh, the best tasting craft beer that you can make with a yeah. proudly Pinoy style. So again, guys, cheers. Thanks so much. Cheers, cheers. to Pedro. Cheers. cheers, guys. Cheers. They say that life's problems can't be solved at the bottom of a beer bottle. But it's the best solution as far as Pedro Brewcrafters is concerned. Because for them, great ideas come from hard work, determination, and of course, a cold beer at hand. My name is Argy Desma. Join me again next week for another Bright Idea.